Another day, another wearable test. Today, we're doing on the Apple Watch Series 8. And it is the first nice day in like a series of five or six really gray, rainy days. So, we're heading out to Central Park, actually, to explore a little bit while we test out the device. But, first things first. Squirrel, living for night. Coffee, check, and welcome to the National Forest of, I'm in Central Park, that's, that's where I am. But I'm in a part of Central Park that a lot of people don't really go to. We're actually at the northern end, just south of Harlem, and in between East Harlem and the higher part of the Upper West Side, I would say. It has another name, but no one uses it. It's it's the higher part of the Upper West Side. We're also just a bit away from Morningside Heights, where Columbia University is. If you're curious about that, I did a video on my iPhone 14 Pro Max while exploring the hidden tunnels underneath Columbia, as well as the university itself. I'll leave a link below to that if you wanna check it out. Now this area, I feel, isn't as popular as the southern portion of Central Park. And that has a lot to do with the fact that Midtown, where the southern end is, is where most tourists stay when they come to the city. But also a lot more of Manhattan itself, the borough of New York City and the name of the island itself is below the park. So that's just where a lot of people enter. And a lot of them just don't tend to make it up this far. So it's a lot more locals that live around this part of the park compared to all the tourists that are kind of in the lower end. And so needless to say, the northern end has a lot less selfie sticks and street performers. And we'll explore more of this area of the park in a sec. But first, if you're not familiar, Central Park is a 843 acre park. The country of Monaco is 500 acres, just to put that into perspective, and is the most visited urban park in the United States and one of the most visited tourist attractions in the world with over 42 million annual visitors. But more than two thirds of the visitors are regular park users that enter the park at least once a week, according to a 2011 report at least. And considering its history, that makes a lot of sense since it was always planned to kind of be New York's backyard. While we're here though, let's quickly talk about the design of the Apple Watch 8 and what the differences are between it and the Apple Watch Series 7. Hint, not much. So firstly, it comes in two sizes, 41 and 45 millimeters. This is the same as Series 7, but it's one millimeter bigger than Series 6. Now the display is also the same resolution, has the same brightness and the same always on display option. We also have WR50 water resistance, so down to 50 meters of water for swimming and IP6X dust resistant, just like the Series 7. We have the S8 chipset, which is arguably very similar to the S7 and S6 chipsets from the last two models. The battery life is rated at the same 18 hours and 36 if you use the new low power mode that they launched in watchOS 9, but that's also coming to the Series 7, so that's gonna be the same as well. We also have the same amount of storage at 32 gigs, and frankly, if you put them next to each other, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between them unless you squinted really hard at the underside to read the model name from there. Now we do have some slightly different color options. For the Series 8, we have the aluminum model, which comes in Midnight, Starlight, Silver, and Product Red, and we have the stainless steel that comes in Graphite, Silver, and gold. And if you aren't familiar, the difference between the aluminum and the stainless steel, other than a jump in price, is the fact that the stainless steel is harder to scratch. The aluminum being a just softer metal is easier. Speaking of, I already scratched my Series 8 on the edge here while filming another video where I slid onto a concrete step and my watch just happened to graze it. You say I was very, I was not happy about that. And you know what really would have helped if I had it on that day? A case from today's sponsor, Rhino Shield. Now, Rhino Shield makes cases that aren't just extremely impact protective, they also look good. I personally like that they're not bulky, especially the ones for the watch. Now they have them for the watch in a bunch of different colors, but they also have a solid suit line that is their no fuss protective case that comes in a ton of designs, colors, and finishes. And they also have their modular Mod NX cases for iPhones, which allow you to mix and match a backplate with various case rim colors, but also swap out the backplate for a bumper case if that's more your style. They also introduce a new grip that you can attach to the back of your phone, either with MagSafe for iPhones or a super strong reusable adhesive for the Pixel and other Android phones that can be used to prop the phone up in various ways, as well as used to hold the phone by when you slide it open. They have cases for all the new iPhones, as well as many flagship Android phones as well. They also ship worldwide and have free shipping for qualified orders, as well as a lifetime warranty for their cases. Head to the link in the description below to check out their cases and use discount code UNLOCKERWATCH for 20% off the first week after this video goes live and 10% off after that. 
Thanks again to Rhino Shield for sponsoring this video. Oh, someone's someone's gonna get home and realize they forgot something. Welcome to the lock, which is the Scottish word for lake, which it kind of isn't really nowadays. No, it was originally a large body of water before time and poor maintenance allowed nature to do what it does with man-made things eventually, even man-made lakes, and that's erode them away. So now it's, it's more of a stream than a lock, maybe. Now that stream, which is fed by the pool, as it's called from the west, and feeds into the Harlem Mere at the northeastern edge of the park, which then eventually winds its way out to the Harlem River and eventually the East River. Now what is kind of cool about the lock area though, other than the fact that it feels like you're in a forest more so than the rest of Central Park or parts of it do. It actually houses three of the five like mini waterfalls here in Central Park. Now they, like the rest of the park, were all man-made, but they look natural, as was the vision of the park's original designers, Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vox. Maybe we'll do another video on the two of them and the design of this park one day. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do that with another device. But the water isn't even coming from a natural place for these either. It's coming from a 48 inch pipe hidden by rocks at the Pool Grotto on West 110th Street. And it's actually New York City drinking water. Not that I'm gonna test that though. While we're here though, what is the actual difference between the Apple Watch Series 8 and the Apple Watch Series 7? And well, a couple of sensors. So we have the same ECG, heart rate sensor, same blood oxygen sensor, and same fall detection sensors. But we now have a new high G accelerometer with an improved gyroscope to allow for car crash detection, a feature also found in the new iPhone 14 series devices. Now, essentially this uses motion, GPS, barometer and microphone and other sensors to determine if you've been in a car crash. Once it detects it, it gives you a bit of time to cancel it. But if not, it'll automatically contact the emergency authorities. Then we have a temperature sensor. There's one on the back of the watch against your skin and one under the display to check against ambient temperature to compare between the two to help reduce bias from the environment. I.e., if it's hot out, obviously your skin temp will be higher, so it needs to know that. Now, after five nights, it tracks this temperature as you sleep, it will determine your baseline. And then after that can show you differences in your temperature compared to that baseline over time. This can indicate exercise, drinking, jet lag, illness potentially, but there's nothing in the health app that really makes any of this actionable to you. The only use case that Apple is doing something with the data for now at least, seems to be retroactively tracking menstrual cycles for women. The Apple Watch since Watch OS 6 can do cycle tracking to estimate ovulation, which is helpful, especially for family planning, but now, it can use the temperature changes that often occur after ovulation to retroactively tell you when it thinks you've ovulated to help you better plan for ovulation going forward. So end use cases for people using the watch that we have that are new on this watch is that retroactive ovulation detection and car crash detection. All of the other sensors, all of the other features, all the fitness features, all of that is gonna be the same on this watch as it was on the last. Okay, and let's test the tracking on this watch, speaking of, and see how it does as we make our way to a different part of the park. Welcome to the Block House, which was built in 1814, well before the park was even an idea. And all of this area was just rocky land, and it is the only remaining of four block houses that were all built up here, which are essentially lookout towers with openings for guns. They were all built after the British sacked and burned Washington DC in the War of 1812, and New York City feared another attack from the north of the city. Now these high hills near here were all prime lookout spots to protect the city. Now that attack never happened and instead they came from the south through Brooklyn. And so these block houses here never really saw battle. But this one, thanks in part to being built out of solid stone, survived. And Olmsted and Vox decided to keep it as part of the park's design as a picturesque ruin, which it kind of is. It's also as mentioned, on top of a hill. And so let's see how the Apple Watch tracked my walk from where we were all the way up to here. And the heart rate monitoring and everything is just, it's what you expect from an Apple Watch nowadays. But this does seem like a good place to talk about some of the new features in Watch OS 9 that will be coming to this new watch. Now, firstly, we have a new Compass app. Now, people originally thought that it was only on the Ultra, but no, it's also here as well. Now, it allows you to drop waypoints and then retrace your steps if you get lost. Handy 
obviously, if you're hiking. And Central Park is big, so maybe you could use it for this as well. You never know. You can also do race routes that let you race against your previous times along a specific path. We also have the addition of heart rate zones, which is something we've seen on other smartwatches, but it helps you get a sense of your intensity level during a workout. It'll automatically create these for you, and they're color-coded so you know which one you were in and for how long, but you can also actually create them manually if you want. In addition to that, you can make custom workout routines as well to get alerts for pace, heart rate, cadence, and power. I am not a person who's going to make a custom workout on my watch because that seems like a lot while trying to do a workout, but I think there are some people out there in certain workouts that this might make a little more sense than just, you know, going to the gym. And as mentioned before, we also have a new low power mode that supposedly gives you up to 36 hours of battery life when you enable it. Basically, it turns off the always on display and background sensor readings, and it limits Wi-Fi and cellular if you have that, but it does leave heart rate and GPS working only during workouts. Okay, we made it home, but there are a couple of things that I still would like to test on the watch. The battery first off, and I guess first we'll say the battery is at 64% when it was fully charged when I took it off of its charger at 10 a.m. this morning, and we did all the things that you saw me do today. But that's not the end of it because I also wanna test the sleep tracking and in conjunction with the two, how much battery you lose when you track a full night's sleep and what you get over the course of a full 24 hours. So, good night. Morning, another day, the same real world test. Now that we've slept, let's talk about the new features for sleeping. Namely, there's a lot more data. It shows you your REM sleep, your core sleep, which is what other companies would call light sleep, and your deep sleep, as well as when you wake up throughout the night. Essentially, it is now on par with all of the other smartwatches that I usually test that have sleep tracking. So that's good. I don't feel like it's quite as accurate as some other smartwatches I've used. Like I know, I was up a lot last night awake. I have trouble sleeping lately, long story, but it showed that I was up for almost an hour. I was probably up for more than more than that, probably two or three. Regardless, during all of that, here's how much battery I lost. Now, one last test, because for me, I like to always get sleep data, even if it is just to tell me how horrible I am at sleeping. And so I wanna be able to charge my watch essentially while I'm showering, because it's the only time that I really take it off. So let's see how much this gets back while I shower. And we got it back to 85% in 30 minutes. I took a shower, I got ready. I actually set a timer for 30 minutes just to keep things consistent, but that's almost 50% in 30 minutes. So that means that I could technically do this for multiple days in a row without having to do any other type of charging. At some point I would have to maybe leave it on the charger for a bit longer to kind of make up for the loss that happened slowly over those three days, four days, whatever it is. So that's actually pretty good, but there we go. So honestly, at the end of the day, I'm not sure that this is a big enough upgrade, obviously, to jump from a Series 7 to a Series 8. Like that just doesn't really make sense. And honestly as well, unless you know, you're know you really interested in your ovulation and the extra features that help that are important to you, or if car crash detection is super important to you and you don't already own an iPhone 14 because that will also do the car crash anyway, there's no real reason to get a Series 8. You're better off, at least for now, while there still are Apple Watch Series 7 available that are new for a discount compared to this, you're probably better off doing that. I'll leave links below to the best prices I can find on the Series 7 devices, as well as the Series 8, because when the Series 7 eventually runs out, which it will probably not too long, then Series 8 becomes a much better option when the Series 7 is no longer there. But you guys let me know in the comments below, what do you think of the Series 8 and the Series 7? Would you, if you had a Series 6, is this worth it to you maybe? Curious to hear your thoughts, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, enjoyed exploring somewhere with me. Subscribe, ding the bell next to the word subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos and take another piece of tech and go explore with it. Got a bunch of them, still coming. I'm a little behind. <laughs> There's a lot of products that got launched this year, around this time of year, Techtober, Techtember, they're things, it's a lot. <sighs> but more videos for you, so 
Stay tuned for that. And I'm exhausted from not sleeping. It's time for another coffee. Bye, guys. A train. There's no train around here. Where is that coming from? And welcome to the National Forest of... I'm in Central Park. I'm not in a national forest. In case you can tell from the helicopter sounds. Ah, yes. Still in the city. There's a truck backing up in the park. <laughs> Someone's on a phone call. In the park. I mean, I say that as somebody who's recording, talking to himself in the park, so like... Pot calling the kettle black a little. I get that. <laughs> Helicopter. They get close enough when you're in Central Park nowadays that you can feel the like propellers hitting you, it feels like. I don't remember there being this many helicopters in New York City. The 13 years I've been here. What's going on? Go away, go away. Still not far enough away. Let's come back. I feel like it's one of those tours, touring Central Park from the helicopter. Ruining everyone's day below them. Little do they know. Poor care. My face is very not lit well. <laughs> oh well. I'm a zebra. I'm a leopard. Then we have a temperature sensor. 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 It's a long day already. In case you were wondering if you were still in New York City, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs>